è Costanzo Bellini from the Department of Civil and Mechanical Engineering of the University of Cassino and Southern Lazio in Italy. And I'm presenting a work entitled Fracture Characteristics of Aluminium CFRP FML under three point bending loading. Usually, structural frame parts are exposed to bending loads that represent the most diffused failure mode. For this reason, the present work deals with the flexural behavior of FML. Both long and short beams have been tested since the length to thickness ratio influences the type of the stress arising in the specimen. There can be shear or normal stress. The aim of the present work is the analysis of the flexural behavior of carrel laminates. In particular, the attention was focused not only on the flexural strength, but also on the interlaminar shear strength. Moreover, the attention was focused on the analysis of fracture characteristics. In fact, a study of micrographs taken on the broken samples was carried out. This work is organized in several steps. First of all, there is the definition of the laminates to be tested in terms of the type of the interface between the metal and the composite. The experimental procedure was determined too, and it was the three-point bending test. Then, the laminates were manufactured through the vacuum bag process, and the specimens were cut from the produced laminates to be tested. Finally, there is the presentation and the analysis of the results. In particular, besides the discussion of the resistance obtained for both beams, the load deformation curve for all the specimens was analyzed, and micrographs were taken to better study the type of fracture. For evaluating the influence of the adhesive interface between the composite material and the aluminum sheet on the mechanical performance of the hybrid laminates, two solutions were tested. In a case, a structural adhesive typically used in the aeronautical field it was the AF163QK was adopted, while the boarding interface of the latter ones relied on the self-adhesive capacity of the resin being a part of the prepreg material. Both the studied FMLs presented the CFRP laminates as external layers. The prepreg material used to produce these layers was made of epoxy resin and carbon fabric with a 2 for 2 twill wave style, and a thickness of 0.35 mm for each ply. The metal sheets adopted in this work were made of ANAW6060 aluminum alloy, whose thickness was 0.6 mm. Considering that each composite material layer was composed by six plies, the nominal thickness of the analyzed hybrid laminates was 4.8 mm. It must be highlighted that, in the case of the laminate with the adhesive, the thickness of the film was a tenth of a mm, so the thickness of the wall laminate became 5 mm. As concerns the manufacturing process of the laminates, the standard prebreg vacuum bag procedure was adopted. First of all, all the required aluminum sheets Lies of carbon fiber prepreg and adhesive patches were prepared for the stagging operations by cutting them in the right dimensions. Once the raw material had been prepared, all the different materials were stacked on the mold. After the completion of the stacking sequence, the enraging of the vacuum bag was needed for the cure in the oven. Therefore, the laid laminate was covered with a release film and a breather cloth and the wall stack was put in a vacuum bag that was sealed with butylic tape. The mold closed in the vacuum bag was connected to the vacuum pump and, after drawing the air present in the bag, the mold was put in the oven for the cure cycle. For the curing of the carrel laminate, a temperature cycle suitable for both the prepreg material and the adhesive was chosen. It consisted of a heating ramp of 2 Celsius for minutes, a dwell at constant temperature of 127 Celsius, and a cooling ramp. At the end of the manufacturing process, 
the obtained laminates were extracted from the mold and cut with a diamond disc saw in order to obtain the specimens to be tested. Both short and long beams were extracted from the same laminate, as visible in the figure where the cutting scheme is reported. As prescribed by the ASTM D790, this is, that is the standard adopted for flexural strength, the dimension of each specimen depended on the thickness of the laminate. So, each specimen had a length of 160 mm and a width of 20 mm. As concerns the parameters of the three-point bending test, a loading nose speed of 6 mm per minute was adopted, while the span length was 136 mm. Instead, the specimen dimension for the interlaminar shear strength were determined according to the ASTM D2344 and were 25 mm in length and 10 mm in width. In this case, the parameters of the three point bending test provided a loading nose speed of 1 mm per minute and a span length of 20 mm. The fractured specimen were analyzed by using a scanning electron microscope and a light optical microscope. In the former case, a sample was cut in the center of each long specimen, where the fracture occurred, to the right dimensions to be fixed on the stub. In the case of the short beams, their dimensions were smaller, and it was possible to install them on the stub without cutting them. As concerns the analysis with the optical microscope, after the cutting, the samples were mounted in a block of resin to allow the surface polishing before the microscopical observation. The results are reported in these graphs for all the types of laminate and specimens, long or short. As concerns the flexural strength, so the long beam, this parameter was calculated through the relation in the upper part of the screen. The specimen bonded with the resin, the resin of the propreg, that is the one called without adhesive, was the strongest. Observing the results for both types of specimens, it can be noted that the type of interface influenced the flexural strength. In fact, the strength decreased with the presence of the adhesive. As concerns the interlaminar shear strength, this parameter was calculated through the second relation, and it is a characteristic of the short beam. In this case, the strongest laminate was that with the structural adhesive as interface. It can be easily concluded that the type of the adhesive strongly influenced the interlaminar resistance. The stress displacement curves are reported for both the long and the short beam specimens. In the former case, it can be noted that both the specimens with and without the adhesive presented a similar trend. In fact, there was a linear stress increment that tended as the maximum stress was reached, and it was followed by a pseudo-elastic tendency, characterized by a sequence of stress increment and decrements. A similar curve shape was observed for the interlaminar shear strength, even if, in the case of the specimen with adhesive, the linear increase was followed by a knee before the maximum point, probably due to the plasticization of the adhesive itself, absent in the other laminate. In both cases, a residual load capacity can be noted. For a better comprehension of the failure mode, a deeper analysis of of the micrograph was carried out. As concerns the long beam specimen presenting an aluminum composite interface made of adhesive, the scanning electron microscope observation evidenced the presence of the failure of the fibers due to crushing in the upper zone of the specimen, connected to compressive stress, as well as the presence of cracks in the transversal bundles both in parallel and orthogonal to the composite ply direction, and the separation of the composite plies, also this due to compression. 
as concerns the lower zone, the breakage of the longitudinal fibers was due to the tensile stresses. It can be noted that a crack developed in a transversal bundle passed into the longitudinal one, but it was arrested by the adhesive layer, and it did not pass into the aluminum. A similar behavior was found by the optical microscope analysis, and in the micrographies on the left, the integral of both the aluminum adhesive and composite adhesive interface can be noted. As concern the short beam of the same laminate, the light my optical microscope evidenced the presence of both intralayer and interlayer delaminations due to the shear stresses, obviously the absence of normal stresses, both tensile or compressive, avoided the formation of orthogonal cracks in the transversal bundles or the breakage of the longitudinal fibers. The scanning electron microscope investigation evidenced the separation of the different plies of composite material, that is, the delamination, and the presence of crack in the transversal bundles, but only in the direction parallel to the plies, that constitutes the intralayer delamination. However, the failure of the interface between the adhesive and the aluminum can be noted, while the optical microscope did not evidence this phenomenon probably due to the mounting and polishing operations. Refractor characteristics recognized for the long beam specimens without adhesive were similar to those found in those bonded with adhesive. In fact, the scanning electron microscope analysis highlighted the failure mode of longitudinal fibers that was crushing in the upper zone and tensile failure in the lower zone and the presence of cracks in the transversal bundles. Moreover, also in this case, the crack did not pass from the composite plies to the aluminum sheets. In fact, there was the complete separation of the composite from the metal, even if some parts of the composite bundles remained attached to the metal. The optical microscope analysis showed that a thin layer of resin was present on the aluminum, so the failure did not interest the interface between composite and aluminum, but it was internal to the composite itself. Finally, the failure characteristics of the sharp beam specimen extracted from the laminate without adhesive were studied. As found for the other sharp beam, the scanning electron microscope showed the presence of price separations and cracks in transversal bundles in both the upper and the lower zone, while the normal failure of longitudinal fibers was not found. Also in this case, the interface between composite and aluminum was broken, leading to the complete separation of the specimen into three parts, the upper and lower laminates and the central aluminum sheet. The same findings were deduced by the optical microscope observation. The aim of the present work concerns the analysis of the flexural behavior of fiber metal laminates with different metal composite interfaces. In particular, two ways were chosen to realize this interface. A structural adhesive film was inserted between the two materials, or not. In this case, the bonding are laid on the composite material resin. The three-point bending test was chosen to evaluate the mechanical characteristics of the produced laminates, and different stress states were analyzed changing the span distance. Moreover, the morphology of the fractured specimens was studied. The experimental test evidenced that the presence of the adhesive lowered the resistance against flexural loads, but increased the depth against shear loads. The analysis of micrographies evidenced that the fiber failure was the main failure reason for the specimen subjected to flexural load, while the delamination was the main cause for failure induced by shear load. Finally, it must be remarked that the specimen bothered with the composite material resin only showed a complete separation of the layers, even if 
a thin layer of resin remained on the aluminum surface. Thank you for your attention.